But despite uh, a physical infirmity that prevents you from sitting uh, because of the problem with the base of your spine, you have really, in a sense, transcended the, the body and, and, and the limitations of the human form uh, with the enormous energy uh, and enthusiasm that you are able to generate in so many people and the enormous self-confidence that you're able to inspire in them. Uh, what, is the, what is the philosophy that, that, has, that, has, that has sort of given you this altruistic thrust I always accept my illness with faith and peace of soul. I always remember him for what is left rather than curse him for what is lost. That's why I could live for four decades with physically handicapped people, children of darkness at Anandavan. The main philosophy that you have uh, perpetuated in your, and we will start with Anandavan though your activities have extended many fold beyond that, has really been that uh, it is charity that destroys and it is work that builds. Where did this, this idea come to you from? Where was it born? How did it germinate? Because I have seen in this world people becoming welfare addicts, healthy people. And I was confronted with the deformities of the leprosy patient with no thumbs left, no toes left, no fingers left. Even they could not show where it aches where it hurts. I was confronted with the blind boys who could not see on the mountain, who could not see a pinch of salt in their plate. Their eyes were never caressed by a ray of light even once in their lifetime. And I was confronted with the deaf and mute children, Bhim, Vasantra Deshpande and Kumar Gandharva, they came here. They were sitting with a vacant look. Towards. Then I realized that on the stage of life, though they are present, they are totally absent in this world. I said to them that if you, up till now, right from the globe of the birth of the globe, leprosy patients in this world were walking all alone. In Anandavan, they decided to walk together. And then we, I fly this law, and charity destroys what builds. And you can see in this small world, though it's a world within a world, it's a world without a world. You can see that they produce everything except salt, sugar and kerosene. It's a mighty faith which has worked miraculously. I think the overwhelming feeling that one gets here in, in Anand one is the enormous sense of, uh, of optimism, of, of self-sufficiency. It's almost as if people who have, handi have, who have a handicap have forgotten that they have a handicap or who have transcended it. Unless you are inspired, you can't inspire others. Unless you are moved, you can't move others. Unless you are motivated, you can't motivate others. This perfume embrace of life which my patients give to life has shown a greatest loyalty to life. Once when I pronounced the, the diagnosis of leprosy, they hated to live. Now they love life. If you go to our corporate store here, you will find even huge pens, snow, powder, nail polish. This is how they have fallen in love with life. I think the other dimension that, that strikes one over here is that there hasn't been an attempt on your part to impose your philosophy in the sense of uh, you know, your, 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 your practices of diet or clothes or anything like that, that your community is encouraged to be themselves. In social service, you can't dictate things. Because social worker is he who understand the needs before they are born in others. He, it's a work of persuasion, perseverance, patience is a reward. Baba, you mentioned that uh, you, you can only be, 
you can only inspire if you're inspired yourself. And I think that many of us um, sort of experience our frailty and our weaknesses. Sometimes we are moved by the suffering that we see. And, and when we, we sort of seem to be grasping for this wellspring of inspiration. Where does it come from for you? Before the use, you know, they want to do something. It's like twilight. Figure is noticeable, but not recognizable. When they are exposed to different adventures and frontiers and fields of service, they can pin down the, that whose silhouette it is, and then they decide to do some work in this life. So where does this wellspring lie outside the parameters of, of the umbrella or the reach of Baba Ambe? I think if, if the disabled sector gives our caste people, people on an outcast land, if they could create an Ananda one, about which I am with great pride, I say, the joy in Anandavan is much more infectious than the disease is Anandavan. I say to the youth, they happen to be leprosy patient. If there is determination, devotion, dedication, if there is willingness to listen to the promptings of your conscience, Anandavan experiment can be multiplied everywhere in this world. You have the faith in people's conscience? I have mighty faith in people. Well, there is only one time. Gandhi Jaipli said, I don't believe in class war. The war is going on within me and within you. It's an eternal st struggle going on between need and the greed. If need has an upper hand over the greed, then the social service can take good shape. What is the role of, 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 of leaders such as Gandhi, and Vinoba Bhave, and, and you, and you have drawn inspiration from these two? I think leader is he who leads himself. Leader is who believes that courage alone can give him power to listen to the shouts of tramp. He doesn't bother what others say. So, the courage, dedication, simplicity, these are the things which help the leader to get followers. In my case, I am a captain of the team. I am not a leader. I am the first among the equals at Anandavan. So they were motivated, they were inspired, and they started doing work. There is no bell, nothing of sorry must have seen. All the work is going on clockwise. It's almost as if initiatives such as people, such as you, is a kind of oasis of hope in a vast ocean of, of despair and, and, and poverty that is India. Do you feel optimistic about the future of India? I feel very optimistic about the future of India. What is that source to him? Because in this very India, those who are most unwanted, those who are dubbed as most unclean, if they can create a forest of bliss on this earth with cooperation, with love, with understanding, because they shape the purpose, they give a definite direction to their life and they rationalize their part. In this country, everybody talks about the purpose, about the aim, about the goal. Everybody talks about the direction. Gandhi gave this thing, Mara said this thing, leaders have shown us the direction. They don't rationalize their part. I, I, I hope the citizens of this country will have to rationalize their own part now. Time has come. How to awaken this awareness? Our leaders are miserably failing, awakening this awareness. They are in a hurry. Power always corrupts, corrupts absolutely. Service gives a power which rules over the head, heart and hand of the man. Baba, you've, we, we, we've talked about leadership and you know, you've described yourself as a captain of, of the team. What kind of future do you see for the movement beyond you, that you have initiated, uh, at, at yes, the moment? Yes, have seen my sons, my daughters-in-law, their colleagues, their friends, scuttling their career, they have joined, half from the madding crowd, they are serving in the Madhya homes, tribal projects, so I, I don't feel discouraged. For the present, I am very much worrying because of the disintegrative forces in this country. I, being a humanist, 
and after having combed Punjab on several occasions, I feel that national agenda number one should be national integration in this country. And for that, I am again, I wanted to add grace to the descent of life also. Even in my sunset years, I will be 75 when I move, I am out to catch the rising sun. This is, uh, you know, you have been to Punjab five times at least. Um, what, where do you think the solution lies? Punjab was never a law and order problem. Bullet for a, for a bullet is a myth. When I went there, during Bharat Jodha Bihan, for space, those who declare Khalistan, this Panthi Company members, Vasan Singh and Gurudev Singh and Manu Chahals, we met in room number 48, 49 in Parikrama. In the Golden Temple. Golden Temple. They said, Sikh nation is in danger in India. I said, why should I waste my time and my energy in talking to the people who talk about Sikh nation in India? I am very sorry. Bolo to sahi, please talk. And they said, then in the, in the end, I broke down when I said, look here, what Bhagat Singh did, what Gandhiji did, what if you go to India Gate, you will see so many names of Sikh patriots, soldiers, colonels. Chief Marsh, Air Marshal of India was a Sikh. Why do you talk like this? I found out one thing. They want to take vengeance of the Delhi riots. Mandir Masjid Girda Gharone Bhataliya Bhagwan ko Dharti Bhati Sagar Bhata Mata Bhato Insan ko their move. Those hardcore terrorists who, who declare Khalistan also had shed tears when I shed tears when I thought, what are you doing with this country? I have, I have hypothecated those tears with the Prime Minister of India and said to him, please, this is not a law and order problem. Political initiative will have to be taken. And then they talked about Lalenga, look here, they had, they had opened a talk with him. Why don't they not open talk with me? Then I said, he was not an impotent man like you. He never went to the bus and said, those who are Sikhs get down, those who are Hindus get down. He never shot innocent people. He was a target killer. Army had perpetrated certain atrocities. When our army occupies for years, it happens, the ours is the best army. And then I used to say that Stengen used to get, get down. And they said, then they said, look here, these mercenaries, these smugglers, these Pakistanis who are fomenting the trouble in India. We are target killers. We will kill, we will kill Gandhi, we will kill Rivero, we will kill Siddha. We are target killers. And then, then they define Atankwadi. I said, who is Atankwadi? Jo Niraparad Admi ki hatya karta hai, wo Atankwadi. They define it. Babar Khalsa people also my mate. They also define like this. What is it that, 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 that we as individuals can do? We must stop this, the balkanization of our conscience which is taking place in this country. Could you elaborate that? Balkanization of our conscience. For example, when I went to South during my first mart, Bharat Jodo Mart, I had a badge which, on which it was written in Hindi Bharat Jodo. And people from Tamil Nadu, Kerala, they said, oh, yeah, Hindi likha, please remove this. I said, look, Kerala, I have written in two languages, Net India, Bharat Jodo. When I go to Tamil Nadu, I will, I, in Tamil, I will write Bharat Jodo. When I go to Kerala, it will be written in Malayalam. When I go to Andhra, in Telugu. When I go to Maharashtra, in Marathi. When I go to Karnataka, Jodisi, Jodisi, Bharata, Jodisi. Like this, I, and I was given a roaring reception there. Someone, we cannot foist, foist our ideology on them. Baba, in your work with the tribals, uh, has it ever come up for you the dilemma of civilization, of progress? Is it inevitably a, a positive thing? You've talked about their innocence, their, their values, their being close to nature. I think we are committing cultural ethnocide in this country. The name of development 
it's not only a destruction of the culture, it's a destruction of life itself. I'm a man in search of man. I was never in search of God because I am doing his work. So I, I don't bother about his making his search. For example, construction of big dams. People call us environmentalist, environmental communities, fundamentalists. These are symbols of destruction. Because not only they destroy the tribals, indigenous tribals' right to property, they pose a great danger to life itself. In fact, I, am intent, I intend to file a suit in this also. public interest litigation suit that, that is endangering my right to life itself. Who's, it, who's development? I believe development means liberation. Instead of liberating the people in this country, we have created a craze for expectation. We have not fulfilled those expectations, so the unrest. Development must liberate a man. He must find out what is good for him, what is bad for him. Gandhian consider what this thing is. We, we are confused with the whole thing because of we have become a slave to, to this media. Our eyes and our ears are hypothecated with this medium. With with, with television. If this being a century of sharing, we are never inspired, motivated common man to undertake an uncommon determination to change his destiny. Common man with uncommon determination can change his destiny. I am convinced. I have seen it in Bambragar, I have seen here, I have seen certain Gandhian projects who are attempting to change this picture in this country. When people are talking about one straw revolution, we are talking of, about energy consuming aggregate. Because, because of the over productive technology, you see, Performance of leisure and performance of work. Gandhi believed in the performance of work, not performance of labor. And over property technology makes a man a slave. Demands are created and the man like a crippled child or a helpless being becomes a slave of those hands. That can change. So the Balanced use of power, energy, coal, fossilized fuel, everything can be shared. We are not sharing our com comforts with the tribals or with the downtrodden, with the, those who are backward. Where does the impetus to change, there is such a broad-based dissatisfaction amongst large sections of the community, where does this impetus of change, for change, come from? Uh, you know, for, 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 for decades it hasn't, it hasn't really substantially emerged other than from, from, the, from the pockets and, and, and people like you, but it hasn't been broad-based. Where does this hope, where does this future lie? Future lie, the leadership must believe in the people. But if it doesn't, as, as, as you because suggested, Because the themselves are not inspired or motivated. Gandhiji, with that pinch of salt at Dandi. But do we wait for another Gandhi? I don't see. Ga Gandhi's technique can be more relevant in this world than he, than he was. Gandhi has become more relevant in this world today than he was during our times. We should not wait. So we go to the people. Gandhi's strength was people. We never took people in confidence. We have our, once in five years, we have an eye on their voters' ban. Now in, some people believe that ballot can be snatched and bullet can work. Others believe that this progress going to the 21st century will help the country. They are not going to help the country. This being a century of sharing, we must share each other's joys and sorrows. We are not sh we are sh sharing the joy, joys, sharing the pleasures, sharing the development, but ignoring those who are suffering from it. We need not wait for Gandhi. 
no nation. Every national problem has a national solution. Full effort is full victory. My complaint is that we have not undertaken full effort to galvanize the whole nation. Baba, would it be fair to say that I, th I think that instead of really sort of holding the leadership or governments responsible, we as a community have failed to catalyze the change. I entirely agree. I entirely agree with you. No, when you talked about, do you wait for Gandhi? I talked about, we don't wait for the leader. I entirely agree with you. For me, for men like me, when he, whenever he shows my way with his tiny little finger, I believe that he will clear my path with his mighty palm. That mighty palm is the palm of the people. That's what I believe. Baba, you've said that you're a man in search of man, and, 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 and frequently in your um, writings and speeches, you do refer to he or him. Uh, how is that he or him manifests for you? What, what does that mean to you? He who helps me to listen to the promptings of my conscience. <laughs> Otherwise, our conscience is suffocated in this world where there is a great pollution of honesty itself. When the mass itself has become a man, it's very difficult to listen to those promptings of his conscience. One who most, that's what I, I pray, I say. Uh, you'll be surprised, anonymous soldier's prayer, which I say daily. I did not get anything which I asked for. But I got everything which I hoped for. And now at the age of 74, I say, I ask not to know. I ask not to see. I ask to be used in his work before I walk in the silent company of nature and God. That gives me a mighty faith. The faith which the scientist has in his hypothesis. It's not a blind faith. Baba, have you ever been troubled by conscience? Many times. How to stir that conscience is a constant endeavor in man. And mine is not a pursuit of wealth. Mine is a pursuit of happiness. And happiness, the world knows. Continuous creative activity is a happiness. And my work for nearly five decades in social field has said to utter one axiomatic truth. Love alone can resurrect any man in agony. And like Krishna Ji, I say, intense passion for love is compassion. Man must have conviction. He must have compassion. He must have vision. He must have passion to get out of If these are four things are there, then you don't bother whether you succeed or you fail. You are condemned to succeed. Why do you say condemned to succeed? In, in a sort of traditional jargon, we would <laughs> see that as a contradiction. Because in the end, man realizes his achievements, his success, is an empty boast. So I said, when he's condemned to succeed. What then is, is, is the motive for him to succeed? Fulfillment. Fulfillment through leprosy world, fulfillment in life. Look here, in this world it's very easy to die for your country. But it's extremely difficult to live for your country. I'm trying to motivate the students and the youths and my patient how to live for your country. It's very extremely easy to die for your principles. Mazhab khatre mein. is in And you see the crusades and they tragedy of his text. But it's very extremely difficult to do according to those principles. In such country, then spurious spiritualism is generated. Really, religion ought to teach us righteousness. Religion has taught us RITS, religious rights, and we quarrel and fight over them. Do, do you believe in, 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 in karma? Because it, it, it may be a very sort of convenient, maybe almost sort of Western-inspired, glib explanation of our predicament, uh, sort of a, a justification for our passivity, of our not responding to, 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 to suffering in the manner that you have responded. Do you believe in this? I believe that 
that his work is, is his worship. Such a simple thing. Then, when I read Bible, in one of my poems I said, I cannot carry the mighty load of his cross, but can I not attempt to walk in the shadow of that cross and become his contemporary? About Gandhi also, same thing. On this side of, on his left side of, to his rib was attached a badge of suffering, which, which is always attached to our also ribs. But on this side, there was another badge which I saw. That badge was badge of staunch confidence. Vedana or Vishwas. Vedana hoti hai admi mein, Vishwas nahi hota. So, ye kaha se aegi? Ye aata hai, jab dukh pehchan nazik se karte hai. When you live with the people who are loneless and the lost and the last, you get that staunch confidence also. Confidence that is more contagious than leprosy. Had I only preached leprosy like any other disease without staying here or writing articles or workshop, I would not have changed the profile of this project. I moved in the country and found out that this is a very easy task. The enemy is visible. Leprosy, tiny little lepra bacillus, acid fast bacillus. It was very easy for Gandhi to fight fit India battle because the enemy was with it. Britishers were there. That's why for so many years we were splitting India. Knitting India is very difficult because the enemy is invisible. It is within me and it is within you. To fight that invisible enemy is a very difficult task. And that requires immense patience solid determination, dedication, devotion, sacrifice, whatever you call. But at most, your spontaneous urge from within not to tolerate these things. I moved in this country. I found out that people also agree with me. Youths also feel that they are helpless. They, are, they don't want to be silent spectators of this whole episode. But they lack cooperation. They lack confidence. So, when I told them, you have seen these masses staying in the slums. You have seen obscene poverty. You have seen big temples and churches and Suvarna Mandirs. God is not concerned only with the soul of man. God was concerned only with, this, with the hunger of man too. It is up with his total ignorance too. And then I said to them, if people remain silent for a pretty long time, those people become the silenced majority. In this country, if people remain silent and nobody goes to them, nobody stirs their conscience, nobody motivates them, then it will be a silenced majority at work in this country, which is most dangerous. Baba, you have so often in your life transcended the body. We, we, we started out talking about that. And, and even as we talk, um, you're, you're in considerable pain and, and, and painkillers, and, 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 and yet you're sort of forging ahead continually, perpetually. You're, you're, it's, it's, it's as if you were driven. Do you fear death? I know life and death are twin brothers. I love both. I was declared dead in national papers on so many occasions. Listen to my prayer. Please, God, make my body my friend. This body has become most disobedient to my will. And then I move. Life and death being twin brothers, I love it immensely. Do you believe in life after death? I, I believe in leading a series of life in this life itself. 